Hello, this is Elizabeth Hobbs, and this is the research proposal for constructivist inquiry methodology. And I am doing my presentation on outdoor adventure education and self-efficacy. So, introduction. There is a group called Earth's Classroom, and that is run by Bill and Jody Miles, and they've been doing this for about 10 years. It's a nonprofit organization, and it is a outdoor education outreach program. Elementary school students go to the program and get to hold snakes and talk about natural resources, and then they also do prescribed burns on their place. Um, it's a very cool program. And one of the aspects that they work with, or one of the programs that they work with, is the Natural Resources Career Experience, or NRCE. And what it is, is they go around to different high schools in the area, and they give a three to five minute presentation encouraging students to apply. And the program has three main aspects. There are eight kind of classroom sessions that take place once a month that are about different components of natural resources. So geology to geography to limnology, which is the study of um, freshwater ecosystems. And high school students do that. Then they also take that knowledge of eight sessions of those things. And they create a presentation for elementary school students and that happens at the end of the experience in May. And then after that presentation to elementary school students, Bill and Jody take these students, it ranges from 30 to 20 students, on a week-long canoe trip, uh, practicing the skills that they've learned over those eight sessions. And the goal is to help students explore natural resources and figure out if it's something that they want to do and what aspect and component that they would like to do. So if they need to major in a specific major, they can have a safe place to explore that. So um, Bill and Jody do outdoor adventure education and it's a blended hybrid program. So there's one end of the spectrum which is just outdoor education and that just takes place outdoors. It's science content and you're outside learning it out of a traditional classroom setting. And then there's extreme adventure education where you are whitewater rafting and learning the skills about rafting and learning the skills about rock climbing. And then there's a spectrum in between where you're learning some science content and you're learning some outdoor adventure education skills and then you're also learning about yourself and how you click and then how you click within different groups. So there's a lot of overlap. The key thing is that adventure education takes place and that's really about the idea of risk and reward through physical challenges and creating a stronger mental image of yourself. And as we've said before that there's a spectrum in between. So as you can see that there's a very broad spectrum and so the literature is all over the place on these different components. It's very interdisciplinary, it's very multidisciplinary, so I tried to take a smattering of these different components and explore the different theories to see which one would fit specifically with Bill and Jody's instance. So the first article we looked at is Sid Thorpe et al. Et al. And that is the experience sampling method where you just Take a section of time for 15 minutes and see what that student is doing and see how they're engaged. Um, and then they identify the tasks as apathetic, fooling, drudgery, and optimal for a Knowles course. And Knowles is nationally known, and it is a national outdoor leadership school open for high schools and college students. And they note that there's a difference between self-efficacy and self-regulation. So apathetic meant not caring, not involved. Fooling meant involved, but not really caring and not engaged. Drudgery means that you were engaged, but you didn't really care. And then optimal was both caring and engaged. Uh, the second uh, piece of literature is Sally Owens, Palmer, di Owens Palmer's dissertation. And this is important because she actually tried to do some quantitative analysis pre and post experience. And she used the Positive Youth Development Scale, or PYD. And basically that's an outlook on counselors and other social workers that youth are resources to be developed instead of problems to be managed. And that there's a 5C model of positive youth development. That's competence, character, um, connection, and caring or compassion. And so what she did, she took a high school class, which was adventure education. So they did kayaking inside the pool and how to do rock climbing and that kind of thing. And the class met every other day as a PE class. And she 
did the stats and she found that there was no difference in self-efficacy and positive youth development uh, pre compared to post. But she did note that this was different because this was a sh that most knolls and outward bound courses are intense short term experiences of week or two week long all the time no break versus this was a 45 minute class every other day or every day. So that might have an impact on the intensity of it. Next, we have Diamato and Kransky, and they're the first to really use transformative learning theory. And basically, the participation in this Outward Bound course acted as a disorienting dilemma. And then for the duration of the course and afterwards, students participated in self-reflection, social interactions, and planning for action and building confidence, competence and self-confidence. And these claims are supported through three different types of interviews with 25 different students. The retrospective interview, the pre-post interview, and the reflective interview. And I am modeling some of my methods based off of this study. And Sterling is British, and apparently in Britain there's even a further slice of this spectrum where there's outdoor environmental sustainability education which bleeds into not only environmental education and outdoor experiences, but also adds a sustainability component. And he was pretty theoretical and talked about resilience education. This is the first time it encountered resilience education language, but it also bleeds into that idea of self-efficacy. And again, you see the language here of resourcefulness, relationships, and reflection. You'll hear that term reflection throughout all of these. And that kind of makes sense because that's how we grow and learn as individuals and characters. So Pauline Keita, she brings in another theory, and that is the Lewinian experimental learning model. And she harkens back to constructivism here, which is summarized as concrete experiences, yield observations, and reflections, which yield formations of abstract concepts and generalization, which results in testing implications of concepts in new situations. So this feeds into the self-efficacy because students have the experience they gain the experience and then they use the experience to further their understanding and ideas. And then Sid Thorpe comes up again. He's one of the premier authors in adventure education. And he teams up with Joe Stad and they look at a social system lens. So another perspective. Um, so instead of student and leader interactions, instead of student content interactions, instead of student and environment interactions, they're looking to student and student interactions and how they work within peer groups and what that leadership looks like. So another leading perspective. And then, of course, there's Bandura, which is what we're going to base the main case on, which is ideas of self efficacy And Bandura says that children's perceived academic, social, and self-regulatory regulatory efficacy influence the types of occupational activities for which they judge themselves to be efficacious, both directly and through their impact on academic explorations. So we're seeing something that is specifically relevant to the study that I'm going to hopefully be doing. Their perceived occupational self-efficacy gives direction to the kinds of career pursuits children seriously consider for their life's work and those that they disfavor. So it's perceived occupational self-efficacy. We'll pay attention to that in a second. Children's perceived of the efficacy rather than their actual academic achievement is key to determine their perceived occupational self-efficacy and their perceived choice of work life. And it's important to note later on that many of the students who participate in natural resources career experience aren't our 100% A students. They're students that think creatively and perhaps are okay getting a C. So we're going to take a look at that perceived self-efficacy here in a moment. So the research question is, do participants express an increase in self-efficacy after participating in the natural resources career experience provided by Earth's classroom. And the key thing here is express, because there's no real way to measure the internal dynamics that are going on with a person. But you can compare their language pre-experience and compare their language post-experience and see, count the number of times words are used and count the number of ideas and metaphors that are used pre and post and do that comparison. And Maxwell was talking about that in one of the other one of the case studies that there was a major major issue in cancer talking about an individual's research versus their perceived language. So the expression part is key because then you can actually start to look at things and start to code things. So the theories that we're going to use is we're going to focus on transformative learning theory and transformative learning theory for self-efficacy. And basically, transformative learning theory utilizes disorienting dilemmas to challenge students' thinking. 
Students are then encouraged to use critical thinking and questioning cons to consider if their underlying assumptions and beliefs about the world are accurate. And this critical thinking and self-questioning could potentially be why the student-to-student -student interaction is there at the end of the program. Um, we can see the expression through that thought process and that gaining of self-efficacy. So methods. We're going to do a case study. The case is defined as the participants of the natural resources career experience, and that also includes organizers Bill and Jody Miles. Um, it's an intrinsic intrinsic case study perspective. We'll be focusing on the case itself, uh, providing a real-life contemporary bounded system detailed in depth with multiple sources. We're going to talk about that methodology here in a moment. The research technique will model ourselves after Diamato and Kransky. We'll do an interview protocol with leaders, an interview protocol pre and post with students, and we'll be doing observations for the two different kind of quote-unquote classroom sessions, and then also observe the student to student presentation, taking field notes while this is happening. And it would be ideal if we could potentially go on that field trip in June and observe what's going on and that kind of thing. So that is a unique um, question later on for the researcher and the role of participant and what the, rule, what the rules are for participation and how those are going to shadow the observations or influence the observations. So in review, um, outdoor adventure education is very varied. It's, a sci it's, a, it's an offshoot of science education, in my opinion, and it gets more in-depth because you've got aspects of character education in there, group dynamics, content, and leadership. So in doing this proposal, I was kind of wrestling an octopus because there's so many different facets, it's hard to nail it down. But I feel like transformative learning theory, that language was through all the literature reviews, and I think that it is very similar to what Bill and Jody are trying to do with increasing self-efficacy. So that's the lens that we're going to look at it, because we're going to hopefully help evaluate that program for Bill and Jody and see if it's actually doing what they want it to do. So the research is going to focus on self-efficacy. Um, we'll use interviews and we'll use field notes for the main methods of data collection. That information will be coded and looked for themes and patterns. And then it's also important to note that there we need to be aware of the ethical considerations when working with minors in non-traditional spaces. Um, in, in classroom spaces, the roles are clearly defined as student and teacher and peer relations. But in these outside spaces, those roles aren't as clearly defined. And so we need to make sure and be reflexive when we're acting with, interacting with students, when we're interacting with the directors, to make sure that those lines are clear, that they, students, feel safe and respected and appreciated when they're giving up their knowledge and their time for the interview process. So I'm looking forward to your guys' feedback. Thank you very much for your time.